welcome back to Little Miss Serene. Today I have a really quick tutorial for you. This is for something that a lot of people commented on when I posted a photo of it on Instagram recently. Um, the photo had nothing to do with this but everybody left a comment about it. So I thought I'd show you um, how to make one for yourself. So it's this really cute little pin cushion that you attach to your sewing machine. It is so handy and I use mine all the time. It's always full of pins. Um, and I love it because it's just the right height for me to just quickly um, pin them in there um, while I'm sewing. So I thought I'd show you how to make one for yourself. They're really easy and they don't take a lot of material or supplies. Um, I am going to be adding them to the online store though. So if you would prefer just to buy one for yourself instead of making one, they will be available on there by the time this video goes up. So I will link to that in the description box down below as well. But if you prefer to make one for yourself, then just keep watching. So for this tutorial, you are going to need your choice of fabric. You do not need very much of this at all. You, all you'll need is a five inch by five inch square. So you can easily use any scraps or fat quarters that you have lying around. I'm using this really cute little floral um, cotton that I picked up from Spotlight recently. This is also the floral cotton that's on the inside of some of our um, quilted clutches which are available in the online store. You will also need some ribbon. So I'm using this 6mm um, satin ribbon, double sided satin ribbon, um, which is really pretty and really good quality. Um, you don't need anything thick, you can use rope, you can use twine, you can use shoelaces which is what the original one that I made was made out of. Um, I really like the ribbon and the satin ribbon is really nice um, and that ties around your sewing machine. So you will need two 15 inch pieces for this one or enough to go around your sewing machine. You obviously need a ruler or some sort of measuring device like the tape measure. You'll need something to cut your fabric and ribbon with. I love my rotary cutter. You also need something to mark out your square with. I really like these Frickson pens. Um, I've spoken about them before. They disappear when you iron them, so they're really good for all sorts of craft projects. The other thing that you'll need that's really important is something to stuff your pincushion with. I use Hobby Fill for mine just because um, it's quite cheap and I have a lot of it and I don't use it that often. Um, and you can really squish it in there and make it puffy. You can also use things like sawdust or leftover material or anything else that you would normally stuff things with. Um, so yeah, you'll need a fair bit of that um, to make it all puffy and nice. And of course you'll need some pins. So let's jump in. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure out your square. So we're going to do a 5 inch by 5 inch square. For me that fits perfectly on the side of my sewing machine but if you feel like you need to do a different width then that's completely fine. Um, so one side is the width, um, how wide it's going to be and the other side is the height and so that is going to be folded in half so mine's going to be end up being about 2.5 inches by 5 inches so you can obviously adjust your measurements depending on where you're going to place it on your sewing machine and how much room you have to work with so I'm just going to cut that out Okay, so now you have your 5 inch by 5 inch square. You're going to need to cut two pieces of ribbon. Um, about 15 inches was how much I needed to wrap around to the back of my machine. But like I said, you may need to adjust this depending on um, how your machine is set up. I would suggest doing bigger than what you think just because you need to tie it behind. So you want to make sure you have enough room to do that. So for me, 15 inches is perfect. So I'm just going to cut two of those out now. So now you should have your 5 inch by 5 inch square and your two 15 inch pieces or to your measurements. What we're going to do now is we're going to fold the 5 inch square in half and just with our fingers we're going to press um, on the fold just to create a bit of a seam. You can take it to your um, 
iron but I really don't think you it is necessary to press it down at this point this is really just a guide so once you open it up you'll see that we've got a crease line there so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to roll up our um, ribbon so the reason that we do that is because we need to put it inside as we're sewing and if we leave it long it's just going to get all tangled and you're probably going to end up sewing over it so this will make more sense in a minute but what um, I'm just going to do now is roll them both up. So now what you're going to do is you're going to place, work out where you want to place your ribbon. You can do it in the middle, you can do it closer to the top, it, it's completely up to you. I'm going to try and go as close to the middle as possible. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, just sit it like this for the moment so that it is all closer to the edge and then line up the other side. We're going to pin this in a moment so that it won't move. So once you've worked out um, approximately where you want your ribbons to sit and you think they're even, you're going to fold over your fabric. So at this point you need to grab your pins. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hold the ribbon in place with one finger and then we're going to fold over this material with our other. And then you can feel the ribbon through the material. So we're just going to grab a pin. And we're going to pin through the fabric and the ribbon so that we keep them together so that when we're sewing it won't move like so and we're going to repeat that for the other side so make sure you've got it lined up fold it over and pin So you might be able to see now why we rolled these up initially. Um, they need to stay in here so that when you turn it right sides out, they're on the right side. If we had left them just as big long straps, um, they would have tangled or we would have sewn somewhere accidentally that we weren't supposed to. So by rolling them up, it means they sit in there nicely. The other thing to do is to pin, um, put two pins on this long edge here. We're actually going to leave a three inch opening on this edge so that we can turn it all inside out and we can also put the stuffing in. Like so. So now we'll move over to the sewing machine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to sew down this short little bit here first and then down the short side then we'll trim our threads and move on to the other side. So the first thing I like to do at this point because we are turning the material inside out is I like to do either a lock stitch or a back stitch. My preference at the moment is a lock stitch just because you don't have to worry about going back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my pin, I'm going to pop my needle down and then I'm going to do a lock stitch, which essentially just locks it into place. So when you turn it inside out, the material won't come apart. Now I'm just going to sew to the end of this. I forgot to mention that I am lining up my the edge of my presser foot with the edge of the fabric. Excuse Bailey in the background there. And I know when to turn because um, the edge of this fabric here lines up with the top bit of my presser foot. So now with my needle down, I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to spin the fabric around so I can have a clean corner pop it down again and then I'm going to sew all the way to the end and straight off the material. At this point what I want to do is I want to make sure also that my ribbon doesn't move inside so I am just going to remove this pin now and keep my finger um, where the ribbon is just so that it doesn't move while we're sewing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to trim our threads. 
and move to the other side. So same process, lining up my presser foot, removing the pin, sorry, you probably couldn't really see then, um, press needle down, lock stitch, just so that when we turn it inside out, the fabric doesn't come apart. And then we're going to continue on to the end of the fabric. Lift our presser foot, spin the fabric, um, remove this pin, make sure that we have our finger on the ribbon. And sew until the end. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to trim the corners. Um, so you just do it on a diagonal, making sure you don't cut through any of the stitches. This just reduces the bulk um, in the seams once we turn it out. Okay, so now once we've done that, we can turn this right way out and make sure we push out the corners. Um, I like to use either a um, knitting needle or the end of a pen or something kind of blunt to push mine out. I know you can get proper pushing out tools, but I don't feel like I need to invest in one of those when there's so many things at home you can use. So I'm just going to use the end of my pen and just gently press those corners out. Okay, so once the corners are pressed out, you can see we have our little pink cushion, which is really cute. So now what we need to do is we need to stuff it. So I would suggest that you stuff it pretty full because that way you get a more plump cushion. So I'm going to use my hobby fill and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it into all of the corners first before I completely stuff it. Just so that we make sure that the hobby fill gets in all of the little corners there. And then we're going to start filling it. So you want to, you can be quite rough and you really want to press it in there so that you get a good amount of plump on your cushion. I'm not sure that's the technical term for it, but that's what I'm calling it. So you really want to shove a good amount in there. good point when um, it is a little bit hard to close the opening. Sorry about Bailey. So I'm just put a little bit more in there. Okay, so I think that's pretty good now. You obviously need to be able to close it so you don't want to stuff it too much. Um, but just as long as you can um, pull it like that and push the fab the fiber in then you should be fine and as you can see it's a nice plump cushion so that when we tie it to our machine it sits out nicely so there are a couple of ways that you can finish off this you can take it to your sewing machine and just finish it off on there if you don't want to hand stitch so my preferred way of finishing things like this off is to do a ladder stitch so if you've never heard of ladder stitch before it's essentially a stitch that um, grabs the two sides together it looks like a ladder as you're sewing and then at the end you pull the thread and it brings it together seamlessly um, I'm actually not going to show you how to do ladder stitch because I'm not very good at it myself and I don't feel like I'm a very good teacher for you but I will try and link to a better video at, on here at some point that you can go and watch um, just so you can see how it all comes together. cushion. I hope you all enjoyed that tutorial. Please tag me in your photos or send me photos if you make one for yourself because I'd love to see them. Um, like I said, these will be available for purchase in the online store in a couple of different fabrics. Um, I'll put the link to that below if you're interested in that as well. Let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials for me and what you'd like to see if that's the case. I'll be back next week with another video so make sure you like this if you haven't already and subscribe and I'll see you then. Bye!